Carl Erskine is our pregame guest. Carl, it's always wonderful to see you, and it's great to have you here at Victory Field today. Yeah, Howard, you've been a great friend over the years, and being at the ballpark, I don't know, I got goosebumps. You know, you th we go back to your career, you threw a couple of no-hitters, you had the World Series strikeout record, which you set in 1953 for one game. What comes to mind first when you think back to your 12 years with the Dodgers? Yeah, that's a good question because you would think those you just mentioned would be at the top of the list. But when I look at the teammates I had, I have to say, you know, those pale in comparison to playing with my roommate was Duke Snyder for 10 seasons. Uh, our captain was Pee Wee Reese, Harold Reese from Louisville. Uh, the centerpiece was Jackie Robinson, uh, the fireball, firebrand, uh, first black player in the majors, a good friend. Um, uh, Campanella caught me in over a thousand innings <laughs> and Roy was a joy to play with and uh, it, you know Howard it, when you recite those names uh, to me that's like uh, fantasy land because I got to pitch for a team that not only scored a lot of runs they were great defense. Now, if a pitcher is going to pick a team to pitch for, that's what you want, runs and defense, and I had them both. And so my record with a lesser team, I'm sure, would have been far less than I was able to post as a, as a pitcher. And I give credit to the guys I just named, plus a few more like Carl Farillo and Sandy Ambrose and some pitchers, Don Newcomb, who was my pitching buddy, along with... Uh, Don, with uh, Preacher Row, uh, Billy Lowe's, and uh, later Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale. So uh, what a spread of names of Hall of Famers that I got to uh, locker with, travel with, play with. Uh, we didn't always win. We got beat a few times, but we, in 12 seasons, uh, my 12 seasons in the major leagues, 10 in Brooklyn, 2 in Los Angeles, in 12 seasons, six championships and two World Series. Well, you've written several books, one of which was called What I Learned from Jackie Robinson, tying into your son, Jimmy. Please right. tell us about that. Well, Jackie uh, is known for so much, but uh, when I think of Jackie, what is the one thing that you think about Jackie? His self-control. Mr. Ricky coached him to turn the other cheek. Now, he was a militant kid. He was a militant black player. And Mr. Ricky, so wise, said, I gotta have that kind of guts uh, and, and fire, but he's gotta control it. And I saw Jackie control it under circumstances I don't think a mild-mannered guy like me could even have done. So I think of Jackie as putting the highest priority on why he was there, not his own record or his, although he had to play well to make it work, which he did. Hall of Fame and the whole thing. Uh, something very symbolic about the Hall of Fame for Jackie Howard. He was the first black player, broke the color barrier, we know that. But all the plaques, the great players that ever played the game of baseball, Jackie is right there with them. And all the plaques are the same color, bronze. Carl, what was it like growing up in Anderson, late 40s, when you came out of high school, Anderson High School, and signed with the Dodgers? Yeah, Mr. Ricky uh, scouted me in high school through a scout in Indianapolis named Stanley Feasel. The Feasel name is very well known in Indianapolis, but Stan Feasel was a sporting goods dealer, but a part-time scout, and used to come up and watch uh, me and my catcher, Jack Rector, were both prospects. And he told Mr. Ricky, this boy is worth signing, <laughs> and Mr. Ricky believed him. <laughs> and I got to sign with the Dodgers after a little stint in the Navy. Uh, played two seasons in the minors, one winter season in Cuba, and vaulted over 200 other pitchers in the Dodger chain right to the big leagues. It's hard for me to look back and believe that really happened. Uh, I'm not that big, you know, and the uh, scouts used to say, uh, son, you throw hard. Uh, how much do you weigh? <laughs> and there was always that little question mark. Where's that, where'd that good arm come from? But, uh, but I did get to sign with the Dodgers at a unique time in history when the youth movement was on right after World War II. And then, uh, of course, we mentioned Jackie in that era. The 47-57 decade, most historic decade in baseball because of Jackie, day-night baseball, trains to planes, radio to TV, East Coast, West Coast, all happened in that uh, decade. So uh, 
I got to be there and be a piece of it. And as we talk, your son Jimmy is performing in the Special Olympics. He is, and I have a Special Olympics shirt on because I've been there watching all these special athletes, 2,600 plus at Terre Haute, and they're doing all kinds of sports inside and out. Jimmy is bowling as we speak. Uh, he's bowling at the Terre Haute Bowl with his buddy, and uh, hopefully he's going to get a medal. He told me this morning when we left down there, he said, gold medal. He's pointing to his <laughs> chest. So if he gets anything less, uh, you'll hear it from Jimmy. <laughs> Carl, great to see you as Thank always. You, Thank you, so very much. My pleasure. Always great to be with you. That's Carl Erskine on the Indianapolis Indians Broadcast Network.